former Minister of Foreign Affairs and two-time Governor of Jigawa State, Sule Lamado, has said that hunger and poverty would be the determining factor for Nigerians in electing the next set of leaders in 2027. Lamido also said that character and personality will play a more crucial role than money in 2027. Well, we will now go on to interrogate some of the emerging issues around that subject by speaking with His Excellency Sule Lamido, a former governor of Jigawa State and a one-time Nigerian minister for foreign affairs. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. How's your sister Hawaii and Topia? How are you? We're very fine, thank, thank you. you. Now you've opined that Nigerians will be united, you know, by poverty and insecurity as factors that will decide how they will choose their leaders in 2027. But I'm wondering, what about religion and ethnicity? Nigerians have never been more divided at this time, even with the rise in hunger and poverty that we're experiencing in the country. How will this influence Nigerians' thought process moving forward? You're already, scared, you're already scaring me by saying you're interrogating me. So you say interrogation, then I get scared, <laughs> to be honest. You see, <laughs> isn't it? Are you there? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> well, we just want to interrogate what's happening. You say we want to interrogate your thought process to know what you think about the state <laughs> of the nation. Well, thank you very much. Um, you see, I always say this, Nigeria is highly blessed, well endowed by God. We have the human population, you know, which is a huge asset. The resources, the strong culture with a very strong tradition. People who are very, very hard working. But then somehow there's something missing in us. And uh, in the last maybe eight years of APC government, we've been through hell. And at one time I felt that, look, what is there in Nigeria to make us, you know, what will make Nigeria, you know, really rise and maybe begin to speak up? We are so docile, we are so literally, literally submissive, and we are, we've, been, we've been utterly overwhelmed. But then I think we are not being pushed to the, to the scream. Today, both the rich men and the poor men are also crying. Dangote is crying, Oritere is crying, they are all crying. The poor man is crying, the governors are crying. You people, you people in Arash people are crying, so it means for the first time we're going to you know a common factor uniting us. You know, hardship, hardship, you know, the Nigerian workers, the peasants, the farmers, nobody is happy, nobody is, is having anything to solve. I think the main unifying factor now is going to be hardship, like the French Revolution, when bread was so scarce and they revolted. I'm not asking for any revolt, but then what I'm saying, you know, that something has to be done urgently. And uh, let me capture it this way. My good friend, you know, uh, uh, Bishop Kuka, once gave a paper in, in Abuja. And he made a very, very kind of, you know, revealing or analogy. He said, in America, in the 18th century, when they are mining coal, when they go down the pit as miners, they carry along with them a bird called canary, a canary bird in a cage. That the canary has got a very, very weak respiratory system. You know, it has got very, very weak, weak lungs. So when they go down the pit, with the canary, and when the oxygen begins to get exhausted, the oxygen in the, in, in the pit is getting exhausted, you know, the canary will begin to shiver, which is the early warning system for the mother. They know, look, the, the danger now because there is no, there is no, there is no more oxygen in, in, in the pit, so please rush out. So the Nigerian canary now is becoming exhausted, it is sending out the alarm, and therefore, the by the time we know we run out of the pit, the canary has already, they are giving us the signal. Like the, the Nigerian canary, like a bishop is saying. So it means that we'll come to the end now. I don't think we can take any further hardship. We'll come to the end of our, of our, of our patience, of our tolerance, of our capacity to absorb. We can no longer absorb anything again. So I think it's about time we reunite. Of course, you know, religion, ethnicity, you know, zone, you know, south, uh, have been few capitals dividing us. But then hunger is not a northern problem. Hunger is not a northern problem. Hunger is a Nigerian problem, it's a human problem. Poverty is a human problem. Therefore, this thing which is now written as human beings will be able to put us together, look, what do we do? So in future, in future, we're looking for a leader, we'll be looking at the character, you know, what is your character? What is your history? What's your background? I mean, what's your moral standing? And how committed, what is your passion for Nigeria? And I think it's about time we begin to think along that line, and I think we're going to do that. But you know, 2027, 
is going to be determined by the personality of the, of the, of the candidate, his character, his moral, his moral standing, his, 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 his reputation, his passion for Nigeria. This is going to be something to determine the, 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 the future Nigerian you know, election. I think so. That's my feeling. Well, we sincerely hope that that is the way that it goes. But we know how history has played out. You yourself uh, uh, noted it. Um, it's not so much the individuals who choose their successive uh, uh, leaders. It seems like the previous leader chooses the successive leader. And I'm talking about godfatherism and succession politics, which has kept us in this uh, dog chasing its own tail quagmire in which um, things do not uh, work out very well for the common man, but amongst the ruling elite class, uh, they keep rubbing shoulders and um, they keep appointing their favored individuals, their favored successors to take on. And just as you noted, some of them don't have the best of characters. So how do we go about dismantling uh, this system of uh, money politics, um, of man no man. It's, it seems very hard to break through, and it seems like the political will to do so is not there. Well, I share your, maybe your feeling and your concern, but then you see, when you come to the end of the limit, when you're at the end of the road, what else do you do? I mean, for how long do you keep relying on what is called godfatherism? For someone to anoint you and they make you whatever you are, either a member of the House of Assembly, a House of Reps, a governor, or president. You see, these things could only operate when we, there's some semblance of a country called Nigeria, when there's something called some symbol of unity, stability, and maybe liberty and freedom. When everything is gone, when we're at the end of the road, <laughs> what they're doing, what, what, I mean, what, people are going to turn out because they, be, they come to the end of the road, therefore they have a time for their leaders say, look, yes, you are leaders, yes, you are being, but then please, for the first time, you know, we either choose the way thing who are going, we either choose those who are going to, you know, save us, save our lives, give us a better life, or we'll fight you. I, be, I think we're coming, we're there now, because this morning I got a from for somebody very, very important in Nigeria, very, very powerful person, very important. He says, Sule, why are we heading to? I said, sir, if people like you are saying so, then it means I'm scared. You can't believe it. Everywhere, from top to bottom, from to us, I'm going to, is he happy? Any, I mean, look, even if you are wealthy, if you are a governor, if you are president, you know, you need the kind of environment to be able to enjoy your authority. If the environment there is not you know, conducive, is not, host, is, is not so supportive, and is very, very hostile, what's the purpose of being a governor or being a president? You, only, you can only govern people when there is something called, you know, the environment for you to be able to show your authority and leadership and even enjoy your, your, your status. When the environment is not there anymore, it's not going to enable you. What, what else do you want? Nobody is happy. Are you happy? I'm asking you, are you happy? I mean, the narrative today is about, well, the naira to a dollar is, is what? They say about one, 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 145, you know, naira to a dollar. If you, if you buy anything today, by tomorrow morning, if you go to the market, the price will increase again. It keeps on going and going and going. If I saw one clip, you know, of a comedian, you know, who was trying to change money from one house uh, money changer, and every time, you know, the man says, he will put his hand in his own pocket, he will ask her, hello, ah, I'll you. And then when they will go to he say, look, if you answer the phone again, I will beat you. So you see, when you come to the end, you react. I mean, it's all calling for, well, nobody's saying people should revolt. It is simply a necessity. It is, you better die, you better, you know, die fighting to, to, to live than, than, than die in your room, you know, it's somebody very hopeless and helpless. You, I mean, there should be some effort. I mean, our leaders should be, you know, they, you know the, the country they are leading, you know, no matter how they feel, you know, they are not safe also in this kind of country. They're not safe. Nobody is safe. Look at Abuja now. Look at Alega. I mean, kidnapping all over. Today, we've turned human beings into items of merchandising. Human beings, like a goat, like a cow. You, I mean, you pick somebody, hide it, and then you begin to price, you know, uh, this much, and you, you hang it on prices, on human, human, human liberty. I mean, I mean, what else? Is there any country today in the world like Nigeria? So to me, well, in Nigeria, well, my, that's my feeling, my opinion. The biggest challenge is how does one, how does, how does one remain sane in this insane country? How do you remain sane? Because there's so much insanity in the country. And therefore, you are also going to be insane. How do we remain sane? How do I remain, me fully, I don't care about you. How do I remain sane in this very insane country? That's my main worry now. 
Well, that's a very, very valid question. But I'm wondering, how easy do you think it will be for Nigerians to trust the PDP again? Like we all know, you know, most of the ruling class, most of the people in the ruling party were originally in the PDP. And you, I don't know if you recall, but I recall that Nigeria was not exactly flowing with milk and honey when the PDP was in power. Of course, we had issues of poverty, we had unemployment, there were Boko Haram attacks, bombing at churches, car packs, kidnappings, and the likes. So you might say that it wasn't as bad as it is right now at the moment. But wouldn't it be fair to say that the PDP actually laid the foundation for what we are experiencing at the moment? Is there really any difference between the APC and the PDP? Well, it PDP was better off. Nigeria is better off than where you know, than we are under under APC now. We are better off. Now, you see, you have to look at the character of the Nigerian people or the Nigerian politicians. I've been saying this that in 1999, in 2003, in 2007, in 2011, the total vote of all other people together, you know, cannot beat PDP. Somehow, the party APC was verifying, they went and brought in all the PDP members who they thought, you know, were scum into their own party. So, to me, the heavy done chemistry in school, heavy done chemistry in school, chemistry, if you know what they call titration and filtration. Today, all this scum, all this scum in PDP are out. What we have now are the genuine, honest, compassionate PDP people, you know, the people who are in Nigeria, because uh, I mean APC, Avle, Adamu, the ministers, whatever, they are all from the PDP now. They have gone now. So we have gone now. The main, the main honest, pure people now in PDP, the ordinary folks like me, you know, people who are very, very genuine, who are very, very sincere, who believe in Nigeria, and who believe that no matter what, they will stay for Nigeria and for PDP. So I think the choice is very, very narrow. You either choose PDP. Or you remain your own hell. It's your own, it's your, it's, I mean, it's your own choice. It's, no matter what you say, no matter what you say, no matter how you analyze, no matter how dirty you wear, no matter what you want to stolen, call us all kind of names, you know, we are better evil than APC. We are better evil. Therefore, the choice for Nigeria, there are two evils. A very, very dangerous evil, which is going to consume every day, and maybe a very, very, maybe saintly, saintly evil, saint evil. PDP and the and, and the evil evil APC. That's all. Wow. That's how it is. So I think you know PDP is more saintly, PDP is more humane, is more compassionate, and is more caring than the APC. But the other words, it's for Nigerian, it's for you and others to make your, their own choice. Well, make we, your choice. we've, so we've come right. a, a very if short. We've come a very short way in our democracy if we are comparing. Uh, like and like the the lesser of two evils. I mean, it's it's quite comical what you're saying, but really, it's it's quite sad. Um, the cross carpeting because it's it's a whole political class um, that understand these issues more than we lay Nigerians do. So if um, you all at the top look, look, cannot look, 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 uh, look. Uh, arrange and assemble no, yourselves, no, no. especially within the PDP. Then what are we supposed to do? We just Excuse look on me. and we're confused. Let, 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 let me interrupt you. Let me Go interrupt ahead. you. Let me interrupt you. Okay? You see, we are all Nigerians. The parties carry nomenclatures. All right? PDP, APC, whatever it is. But then these are pure nomenclatures. They are probably by Nigerian people. That it's Nigerian who are these parties. And these Nigerians are like you and me in the judiciary, in the police, you know, in the market. I mean, it's the same Nigerian. So why are you talking about PDP as a nomenclature? It is with the Nigerian first, you know. I mean, tell me, you in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the TV industry, whatever you call it, you know, are, are you not suffering? Don't you have some problems? So if the Nigerian thing, as what you should I know, why can't you for once look at ourselves as people and say, look, why have you got wrong as Nigerians first? Ignore the compartment, the compartment of APD, of PDP, APC. We as Nigerians, wherever we are, whatever is our own profession or our own careers or our, whatever we do, what are we doing wrong and what are we doing right? Go to the market. People cheat. Go to the filling station. They alter the meter. You know, go to the uh, TV station. When they when they get ad, when they, they they give you the advert, you know, they they they, they inflate the, the price. I mean, everything. I mean, the Nigerian thing. As all of us, 
wherever we are. So first, ignore the nomenclature, PDP, APC. Look at the Nigerian people. Are we willing to change? You know, have we come to the end of the road? Are we well, willing to change and do the right thing for the first time, at least to save ourselves? Well, sir, definitely. What you're discussing is a human nature issue that d doesn't particularly just uh, involve Nigerians. There are cheaters and scammers and corrupt people everywhere. But um, with the ruling class, especially with the country as great as Nigeria, one would hope that those individuals would get sifted out and the, the cream would rise to the top. And that's not what we're seeing. But I want to sp speak specifically about the PDP because, um, you know, we can speak about human beings all we are, all we want. But um, you, you are within the PDP and you have been a governor of Jigawa State. You are quite an astute individual. So... Um, Concerning the PDP as an opposition uh, par party or an opposition figure, we all know for a democracy to thrive, there's got to be balance. There has to be checks and balances. Uh, the ruling party must have individuals that um, put their feet to the fire and not just the media. The PDP seems to have been, well, for a lack of words, they seem to have lost their way um, within this last uh, uh, electoral cycle. And a lot of us have been um, wondering what are the internal mechanisms that are working behind the scenes in order to get PDP back to where it once was. We know that there hasn't been a national uh, NEC meeting for the year. We know someone, uh, one of your form, uh, governorship aspirants from Ogun State is suing the National Working Committee of the party. Um, so what is the PDP doing in order to get itself back to its past glory? You see, as you are talking, you saw me shaking my head because you are so much fixed on PDP, PDP, PDP. Now, why are Nigerians so lazy that you know, they want me to do everything for them? All of you, I mean, how many of them PDP? What, how many are the Nigerian voters? PDP in the last election got about how many, how many million votes? We are 20 million Nigerians. And all of them are waiting for PDP to speak for them. All, I, I, come on, for God's sake. What are you doing, you people in Nigeria? What are you doing? The government is for you. The parties are for you. PDP is for you. So is also APC. And you are being governed. What are you doing by the way you are being governed? What are you feeling? Why are you so lazy? Why are you so, so, so cowardly that you know you want, to be, you want PDP to speak for you? I mean, you, you, can't, you can't feed your family. You can't pay your school fees. You know, your, your child is sick. And you're waiting for people you can say, please, okay, take this. No, please, it's a Nigerian phenomenon. You know, the problem is Nigerian, you know, all of us, you know, we are suffering. So support PDP, come and talk with us, so they know by time, give us the kind of support. But if you're saying, well, fine, what do I do? No, support us and get back where we are, and they will throw the country. But if you say it's PDP, PDP, what are you doing? So it's a human, it's, it's, you see, I feel a bit, you know, in fact, frightened that you know that you rely on PDP only to be the talking, to be talking for you when the suffering is coming to you. Why are other they not talking? Other Nigerians. In any case, look when they form government, they make you know uh, the the PR man you know, of government you know all, all for all for, for the media. Why 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 don't you decline to to to, to join the government? They make attorney generals you know from the from the, from the from the from the from the bar association or from the lawyers. Why do, why do they decline to join the government? You see. I mean, people, it is Nigerians who are occupying this position who are unleashing pain and agony on Nigerians because it is the professionals who are hired to work, the civil servants, the whole party. I mean, why do you look onto the government, the, 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 the party and, and the leader? The civil servants, are they doing the right thing? In the banks. I mean, if you go to the bank to get some money, you find that you know, if you get this in a bundle of 500, 500, 500, 500 naira, by the time you carry you you the, you the money, you find that you've got only maybe about 425. The money has been taken out. I mean, there is simply fraud in Nigeria everywhere. There is, there is, what, there is what I call what? How do I call it? I mean, people are no longer honest in this country. Everywhere you go, there is dishonesty. So when the system, when the entire people, you know, unite and converge, you know, and begin to has, you know, unleash pain on themselves, why are you asking for PDP? PDP is a nomenclature for course. I mean, the, 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 the letter PDP, even in APC, there is also a P. You know, so, so ignore the nomenclature. Look at the Nigerian people, you know, are they, how, how are they responding to the way they are being governed?
If they are right, they should speak. They should come out and talk. But then they would, they love PDP. Okay, PDP is a political party. We don't have a meeting. They are not doing anything. <laughs> Wake up, please, and please speak for yourself. Stop asking. So, so you know, somebody say, are you PDP? Anyway, why, are you PDP? Are you PDP? Well, now, if we don't want Nigerians to Hawa rely... Oh, Tope. Now, this is Tope speaking, Hawa you know, Hawa and Hawa I just want to... I want to ask a follow-up question. You know, if you don't want Nigerians to rely on the PDP uh -huh. to speak for them, why then is the PDP seeking the support of Nigerians? Mm -hmm. There are other opposition parties that Nigerians F can rely on. F and of course, fine. I'm, okay, I'm fine. sure you're aware, go, 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 you know, go, go, that the go. Labour Party has already said it is the only viable opposition party in Nigeria. So if that is the case, let's fine. just know they, that the PDP is dead vote, and buried vote, and then vote, okay, vote Labour. Vote Labour. You, look, look, you see, there is no compulsion in the way you vote. It's your right to, to make your own choice. If you don't like PDP, please leave it alone. Go and vote Labour or vote Accord. Vote Labour is your right. I mean, why, 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 why must you PDP? feel free to vote anybody you want? As Nigerians, let them feel to go and vote anything they want. Is they, they are right? Okay, fine, leave PDP. No, okay, fine. I mean, are we in power now? Well, you know, we've been flushed out, you know, about, you know, eight years ago, we've been flushed out. We're not complaining. You have put your own government now, your own choice, you have made a choice, fine. If this one goes first with them, there's also a court party, the Labour Party, go there and make your choice. We are not desperate. We are offering, we are volunteering to offer our service to Nigeria because we are compassionate. We have the empathy, we have the feeling, the human concern, the human decency, and the commitment to our country. That's what I'm saying, we'll do it. But then you keep on saying, we failed, we failed. Fair enough, we failed, agreed. Feel free, go and vote anything you want. Go and vote for Satan, if you want. Go and vote for him. Now you say, B, what do you say, me? Well, as exciting as this uh, discussion has been for not just us, but our viewers as well, <laughs> I'm sure that they would want to leave with uh, something on a positive note, something that could give uh, Nigerians a bit of hope. We have ruminated on all the issues of Nigeria. How, how can uh -huh. we possibly um, put our leaders to task? On parting note, on parting note, Nigerian, please, Ignore what you know, Topi and how, how I was saying about PDP. Reflect and see what were we in 1999? How was the country in 1999? Were we united after June 12? Were we stable? Because you can't bring in progress, stability, uh, 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 prosperity, security, if there is no trust. First, you know, we had to be so that can call trust, which is missing. APC came in, went to, you know, got a divided, you know, between North and South. The Malams, the pastors, I mean, we are divided family. Let us first unite as a single family. And then from there, you know, restore the thing called trust and confidence in each other. Because the PDP had been there in 1990 to, 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 to 2011. And we've done our level best. But then we are flushed out. Now, the question is, I you know, we have a two-page, two page, you know, history or, or, or read, you know, page one, PDP 1999-2011. Page two, APC 2014 to 2023. APC, PDP, restoring unity, stability, brotherhood, sisterhood, empathy, human dignity, human decency, human concern, prosperity, and everything in heaven. APC, pure hell. Very satanic, very, very evil, very, very, I mean, literally turning in, in, into, into slaves in our own country. So the choice for Nigeria, you know, we are not begging. We are simply telling you, wake up, you know, use your number seven, or number, what, or even number if you have, you know, apply yourself and then judge and see, is this country safer now under AP than they were under PDP? If your answer is no, then it means get back PDP. If you think you are safe, you are very free, fine, it's up to you. That's my, that's my, that's my appeal to Nigerians. Well, thank you very much for that. And then just finally, before we let you go, you know, 2027 is still a very long way off, you know, even if the PDP can help Nigeria. Yeah. So we need an urgent solution to all the myriad of crises that we're facing in the country. So as an elder statesman, you know, and as a leader in Nigeria, what suggestions would you offer this administration on how to tackle the security crisis, inflation, poverty, unemployment, and all the other issues we're facing? Why do you keep on negating yourself? We are in power. The current party say, no, we are not good. We don't know how to do anything. We are evil. We are looters. We are thieves. We are Boko Haram. Now you are asking me to give them advice again on Boko Haram? I mean, I was verified. 
I was, hu I was humiliated. I, 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 was, I was called a devil. I, I mean, I went through all kinds of you know, pain and agony, simply because I was trying to serve Nigeria. Now they are in power now. You ask me to advise them and tell them what? I mean, how? What do I say? Because I was there before. They say I'm no good. You ask me to give them better advice again, better advice. So tell your president, tell Tribu, if you voted for him, go and tell him that you have, you have some problem. Talk to him. But Sule cannot talk to him because, will not talk to him because, you see, what does Sule tell him again? Because Sule is PDP. And PDP is everything evil. So if I go to him and say, ah, come on, so leave me alone. Ah, only, only two years ago, I can do talk, talk, talking the same thing you know about us. Two years ago, I say, I can do. There's somebody who was unknown, you know, you know a, 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 an invasion of PDP contraption in the APC. And he was abusing PDP. So you're asking me to, again to advise the government, government or APC? Oh, come on, please. Be fair to me, for God's sake. Well, that was great. Uh, thank you for joining us, Alaji Sule Lamdo, on Newsday today. Mm -hmm.